Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about using version control with Microsoft Fabric. And why would we want to do that? Uh, the reason is because we're when we're editing notebooks and other assets in Fabric, um, usually we're using auto saves. So any change we make is immediately saved into the Fabric workspace. And we might make a mistake and we want to go back into another uh, version of that asset from maybe yesterday or last week if we made a mistake and, and made a change we didn't really want. The second reason is we might want to actually push changes that we made from a development to a production environment, and we can use Git to do that with Fabric as well. But in this video, I'm just going to cover the basics of how do I actually set this up? How could I set up a version control Git repo to uh, manage the code in my notebook? So let's get started. To get started, I'm going to create a brand new workspace. I have to give it a name, so I'll just call this um, repo demo workspace. and uh, no description, assign. This is actually fine, advanced. I don't think I need to do anything here. That's fine, apply. Okay, so now I have a new workspace. Uh, there's nothing here yet, so I'm gonna do a couple of things. So in this workspace, um, let me add a new lake house and I'll give it the same name. So it'll be repo demo lake house. Create, and I'm just gonna set up a really quick uh, data source and some uh, a demo uh, notebook that we'll use to put into uh, into Git. So in files, let me just upload a file that I have. Okay, and this file is uh, SpaceX Falcon launches, so we upload that. And pretty quick, it's a very small file. And then if I look in that folder, I have that file there. Now let's create a new notebook. And I'm gonna give this notebook actually a name. And this is, I'll call this my uh, launch notebook. Um, that's what we'll see in the GitHub repo when we commit it. And then we connect the lake house to that existing, uh, that lake house there, go. And then within the code, I'm gonna go ahead and just read in that file. So just so this has some kind of uh, content in it. And I'll run that just to make sure it works. Okay, and that's, okay, so that's run. That's my data, that looks fine. Um, I don't really care about this. I just wanna have some, something in my, uh, in my workspace. So now I have in my workspace, I have a notebook um, and I have a, a lake house. The lake house has some models and so on. And the next thing I need to do is to actually create a repo in a Git environment to push this to. And currently, as of this recording, uh, the only Git environment that's supported by Fabric is um, Azure DevOps. So I'm going to create a project in DevOps and create a repo within that project. So I'm going to call this the same thing. Let me see, what did I call this? Repo demo. Okay. So let me create a new project. I'll just call it the same thing. It's going to be private because I don't want the whole world to see this, just my company or my users. I'll create a project. Okay, welcome to the project, that's great. Let me go to the repos. And a repo has already been created for me, uh, but I do want to create a new branch that I'm gonna push this to. And in this situation, I could have multiple branches, like if I had development and production uh, fabric environments or something like that. But in this case, I really just wanna have one main branch, so we're gonna keep it simple. So we're gonna have a readme, um, we don't need to git ignore, and we'll initialize the main branch. And then we'll reference this from Fabric. Great, so if I look at the main branch at this time, there's a readme on there and nothing else. Uh, this is enough, so this is set up, and the git repo is ready for us. So we can look at, here's our, our, our data science uh, view of the workspace again. So the next thing I'm gonna go into workspace settings, I'm gonna choose git integration, and you see the which Git environment to connect with, and Azure DevOps is actually the only option, so that's fine. Uh, then I choose the organization, so this is the same organization that I used over here. So the, this is the same organization, Cur.cc here, or Cur.cc is the uh, is the org. The project is the one we just created. The repo is the one we just created, and then the branch is main that branch we just created. The folder you can use. So if I wanted all of this. Uh, 
if I wanted this this notebook to go into a specific folder, maybe I have a different folder for different notebooks, I could actually do that. In this case, just the root of the repo is, is fine. So we'll click Connect and Sync. And now we can see that there's a new column called Get Status. It says Syncing. So in other words, it's pushing it to the repo. Now it says it's synced, great. You notice that not every kind of asset is supported by this integration. So this uh, SQL Analytics endpoint is not supported. That makes sense because this is an automatically generated endpoint. There's no need for us to put that into version control anyway. But the, um, the model is in there, the lake house is in there. So we actually will see those in here if we refresh. So let me go ahead and refresh the screen. Now I can see I've got some of the lake house stuff is in here and so these are metadata configurations so this is great because if something goes wrong um, we can at least get back and see what we had before and then if we look at the notebook and look at the notebook content we can see that that's the notebook cells we put in there okay so we're in we're in there now everything looks good we're synced now what if we went into the notebook and made a change so let's say we didn't want this comment in here it's a little bit superfluous. Let's remove that. And then just kind of go back to this view, refresh that. And now we have an uncommitted change to the notebook. So um, I like that change. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, save that. So if I look at the top of the screen now, I have source control. It tells me there's one uh, uncommitted change or update that I need to make. So I'm going to I'm going to go directly to the main branch. You know, I, I could have set up multiple branches and and, uh, and and did an actual like git flow sort of process but in this case i just want to commit this change so i'll just say removed um, extra comment and the item i'm going to push is that one commit committing your changes so this should take a second and then if i go over here and refresh that now i should say that the the file is different And then if I look at the commit history, you know, I'll see that the commit that I just made is right here. So I can see that I deleted that one line. So that's pretty much it. This is pretty easy setup. The get status is pretty easy to follow. Um, so let's do one more thing. Um, why don't we go into this notebook and let's make another change. Let's say we accidentally remove this line. And then, you know, the next day we came in and noticed, uh oh, what happened to the top of this notebook? It should be there. Um, that's a problem. Let's go over here. And instead, we're going to undo that change. So any uncommitting changes will be undone. OK. Now it's pulling it back from the repo to overwrite what I have in my uh, environment. So undoing, they call that undoing changes, but really it's just kind of a doing a fetch from the repo back into Fabric. Okay, done. Your selected changes were undone. That's good. Now, if we go back into the notebook, we can see that that line that I accidentally deleted uh, has been restored, and we're back to where we were on our last commit. Okay, that's it. We connected our workspace to a Git repository stored in Azure DevOps. Uh, very easy to set up. Once it's set up, it's pretty much runs itself, and uh, the, the UI is easy to follow. Uh, we can commit changes. We can uh, recover our changes that we didn't meet, intend to make. And then although I didn't cover it, we can switch branches and actually use that as a way to take uh, committed changes and merge those as pull requests and get them to production, which we'll probably cover that in another video in the future. Hope that was uh, interesting, or at least if you learned something, I'll see you next time.